Welcome everyone to the April 14th Capital Market Special Interest Group Mortgage Subgroup Update. That is a long title. Yeah, that's a mouthful, Marvin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. We are excited to have everyone here. We do have a, a lot of things that we wanted to talk to everyone about but we just wanted to welcome everyone. We are doing this meeting from Las Vegas, Vegas, baby, um, at the MBA Tech Conference. The, this has been a pretty interesting conference, so we'll provide you guys some insights on that uh, from our team and also hopefully from some of the other participants as well. So welcome everyone, and let's just go ahead and dive right in. Um, as we start on, the, this presentation, we wanna make sure that we let everyone know that this meeting is being recorded. It's under the umbrella of the Hyperledger Foundation. So we ask that everyone abide by the antitrust policy, which is up on the screen. The antitrust policy states that we avoid discussions of company specific pricing products and projects. We don't make negative comments about other companies or products. Uh, also the code of conduct, um, I uh, don't have that on the screen, but the code of conduct for Hyperledger states that we treat each other with respect, never discriminate and communicate constructively. We fully support Hyperledger's policy of openness, equity, and inclusion. And for new participants, because I do note that we do have a couple of new participants, we welcome you. If you'd like to introduce yourself in the meeting chat, please say hello, let us know if there's any areas of interest you would like to cover and just overall welcome. Okay, here is the agenda for today's meeting. Uh, we've gone through the welcome, meeting housekeeping. We'll walk through some Hyperledger community information. I'm gonna burn that pretty quickly because this is information we like to carry from meeting to meeting. James is gonna walk through a state of the blockchain in the global mortgage industry. Then we'll have discussion of blockchain at the MBA tech conference where we are presenting at right now. We'll go through future agenda topics and then Q&A at the end. We always start off with this slide whenever we go through this because we wanna emphasize the fact that we're all on a blockchain journey. If you're on this call, you're somewhere along this path. You may be looking at different technologies. You may already be building a blockchain application. You may be looking for customers for your blockchain app. So we just wanted to underscore that we're all on the same journey. We just may be at different points along this path. The intent of this group is intended to help everyone on their blockchain journey. Um, and our goals demonstrate the feasibility of blockchain technology to mortgage industry use cases, define the potential implementation paths for the mortgage industry, and what does a mortgage company need to implement blockchain, and how difficult is it to implement blockchain. Some community information for the new members. And as I said, I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly. Here's a site map and some key links for people that are new to uh, this group, the Linux Foundation, the Hyperledger Foundation, which all falls under the Hyperledger Foundation. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I do wanna call out the link to our specific mortgage subgroup. This is the second one from the bottom. This link will get you to our wiki. You can get to previous meeting notes to some of the information, research information that we've identified in the past, and we'll cover this again. The next slides, I'm just gonna go through very quickly how to create an LFID. To be a part of the subgroup, you need to go through this process. I'm not gonna go over it, watch the video. Uh, this is a very easy process. Here's some blockchain training. This is free training that's provided by Hyperledger. I think it's very good. It gives you a good understanding. If you're new and need an understanding, please go through this or also reach out to us. We'll, we'll walk you through some of this stuff. We're, we're always willing to talk about blockchain and the team knows I can drone endlessly on blockchain. Okay, well, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to James. He's gonna give you an overview of the state of the blockchain. Marvin, thank you very much. You're always entertaining. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the first slide, Marvin. And so here's just a reiteration of, you know, the timeline of some of the articles we have previously posted since we started these meetings up last year. Um, 
you know, looking back in the global space back in 2018, you had a variety of things that were going on in China, Hong Kong, Russia. Really, as you started to get into the last year or two is where we've seen a lot of traction, both at the, the global level as well as the US level. Um, you know, some of the interesting things, we do have all of these articles available on our wiki site. Um, some of the articles, like we previously talked about Redwood Trust uh, announcing the first non-agency residential blockchain MBS um, a couple meetings back. Um, we actually met with Fred Matera yesterday from Redwood Trust. He actually did one of the presentations that Marvin's going to be talking about a little bit later. You know, here in 2022, some of the articles that we've been talking about coming out of Canada, NFTs, Meet Real Estate, um, uh, the state of the, the blockchain 2021 global data, that one is a fantastic white paper. It too is available on the, the SIG site. And then, you know, in the USA space, uh, talking about um, the introduction of the USDF consortium and the first crypto mortgages being launched. Uh, some of the articles I'm going to talk about today come out of Infosys, a great white paper on uh, the metaverse. Um, JP, or excuse me, JP Morgan um, talking about the metaverse. Infosys talking about digital transformation. And then here in the US, I've got a couple ones that I want to talk about um, relevant to, hey, looking at mortgages from an NFT perspective, as well as found a great article on a variety of new startup companies that are jumping up in the Washington area. Um, and we'll talk about those in just a slide or two. Next slide, Marvin. There we go. All right, so uh, coming out of Infosys, they had a fantastic white paper. They did it on the global level, a study of blockchain in the industry, where are companies in different industries heading? Kind of uh, give you some of the highlights, the key findings. So of the mortgage providers that responded, 69% of them say that their profits have increased um, from previous years. So even through the pandemic, they're continuing to, to be profitable. Post-pandemic, the lenders say they're starting to prioritize diversification, focus on customers and financial outcomes. 92% of the group claim to have at least doubled their pace of digital transformation this last year, with 20% of them reporting to have quadrupled that pace. And as we all know, the more digitally transformed the mortgage provider, the greater likelihood of increased profitability. 87% um, responded back having strong positive sentiment about the industry's ability to transform to the customer's needs. The biggest issues are insufficient budgets, lack of partnerships. Only 4% of respondents com coming back actually claim to be fully digital at this point. And then as well, 85% of those responding do plan on upgrading their technology with nearly 90% talking about making investments in IoT and blockchain over the next year. Um, respondents who felt their organizations are well equipped to meet these changes uh, for consumer needs are definitely more likely to invest in digital transformation projects. We actually saw a lot of that discussion going on here at the conference this week. We do have this full white paper available under our industry, industry research section of the uh, wiki site. So I do encourage go in and take a look at it again. It's from a global perspective. They do have it broken out by industry. They have it broken out by country, but just some fantastic information to see what's going on out there. JP Morgan also in February, um, they announced they're making a giant leap into the metaverse. So they released a white paper on the metaverse in February, estimating that the virtual realm might represent a one trillion yearly market opportunity. They've already built a lounge in Decentraland. It's a blockchain-based virtual world. Um, their uh, um, lounge that they set up called Onyx, you can actually see a picture of it on the site here. Um, Onyx is the first global bank to offer a blockchain-based platform Form for wholesale payment transactions. Mortgages, rental agreements, loans might all become a reality in the coming years, according to JP Morgan. 
In the same white paper, they noted the average price for a plot of land in the, the metaverse has been steadily on the rise. In the second half of 2021, virtual real estate costs nearly doubled, climbing from an average of about $6,000 a month, month all the way up to $12,000, excuse me, $6,000 a plot, all the way up to $12,000 by the end of last year. A lot of other organizations too have been jumping on this. Um, Mark D'Angelo last uh, month did a great presentation talking about the metaverse. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to see that, go to the Wiki site. We do record all these sessions and then post them up there afterwards, but highly recommend taking a look at that one. You know, some of the other uh, organizations outside of mortgage that are jumping into the metaverse include companies like Adidas, Atari, Gap, Hulu, Nike, Walmart, Verizon, just to name a few of them. So you can see the metaverse is actively growing and companies are taking a you know, very serious focus on what the future of the metaverse and profitability will be. Uh, last November, Grayscale, which is a digital asset management company, actually, uh, yeah, stay on this one, Marvin. The digital asset management company, um, they also published a similar estimate for forecasting the metaverse could be a $1 trillion market while Goldman Sachs actually disclosed they think the space is gonna be worth several trillion dollars over the next couple of years. <clears throat> this white paper also is available under the blockchain information research section of the, the wiki site. So if you'd like to see the details on, on it, please do go take a look. So moving over into the US sector, so mortgage lender Loan Snap recently announced they had minted the first NFT mortgages in existence using their Bacon protocol to wrap seven mortgage liens into tokens collectively worth $1.5 million. According to Loan Snap, the benefits include lower mortgage rates, faster loan approvals, and greater flexibility around, uh, uh, excuse me, around repayment terms. As uh, you know, I think we all know on this call, blockchain can permanently record information like applicants' credit scores, the debt to income ratios, home values, where those need for verification through middlemen can be eliminated. In turn, that reduces the cost and time involved in the lending process. Um, financial regulation and capital requirements have historically made it virtually impossible for everyday individuals to get involved in the mortgage, the mortgage industry. This leaves only the financial institutions and the government to soak up what's considered to be one of the lowest risk and consistent yielding assets, asset classes available. Tokenizing the housing debt eliminates many of these barriers to entry, potentially making it possible for anyone with a DeFi wallet in the future to own a fractional share of a mortgage. So it'll be interesting to see where Loan Snap goes with that. And as other mortgage lenders start to take a look, um, if they jump on board as well, but it really opens up a lot of new investment opportunities to the average consumer. The last one I've got on here, Seattle is really growing. Um, a lot of startups have been starting to show up. The uh, Seattle region has actually become home to several new uh, companies developing a variety of products and services related to crypto, digital currency, blockchain, distributed ledger-based technologies, Web3, blockchain-based internet. Um, quite a bit's going on in that, that area. Well, while this article, the list is not exhaustive of all companies, it does represent 18 different startups, including information about the year founded, what is the company doing, who's the CEO, and what was their background before starting the company, um, along with links to their website and related articles about the company. Highly recommend taking a look at it, start to get familiar with some of these companies because, you know, some of them are apt to become big players in the industry. Another interesting thing that the article talks about, uh, it discusses the fact that in Washington State last year, they launched a new center for fintech information to help facilitate communication between the, the fintech department, entrepreneurs, startups, other fintech companies really starting to get into a little bit of a, you know, regulation and preparing for that. The Center for FinTech, it's gathering licensing guidelines, 
regulations, trying to incorporate them all in one place for use by all of these different organizations. We anticipate over you know, this year, the next couple of years, you're gonna see a lot of that starting to pop up in a variety of different states, as well as the federal level. So I encourage everybody to take a look and read through the articles um, to learn more about these startups and the, the direction that we're starting to see from a regulatory point of view. Uh, the next slide, Marvin. So just a reminder, this is the CMSIG wiki site. Um, over on the right-hand side is where the global mortgage industry research um, is. All of your newer articles you're gonna follow over there, including the ones that we talked about today. Um, over on the left-hand side, there in the middle, you're gonna see links to uh, not only this page, you're gonna see links to all of our historical uh, recordings. So please go take a look there, as well as our, our previous articles that we have discussed. Um, we've got them posted on a separate page as well. Down at the bottom, you'll see the URL for the wiki. I actually just posted it into the chat again. So if you get a chance, click on that link, mark it as a favorite. And then, you know, as Marvin indicated, follow the instructions. We'd love to have you sign up so that you start getting notifications whenever we're adding new content or as meetings become uh, up and available. I'll pass it back over to you, Marvin. Okay. Thanks, James. On to our next section. Okay, Vegas, baby. I promise Angel I'd say that, but uh, I probably had already too much coffee. In I think this has been a great conference. Uh, this has been one of the first uh, mortgage technology conferences in a while since the pandemic started. So we're really excited to attend this. And as the meeting invitation noted, uh, some of us are actually still here. So in this portion of the presentation, we want this to be an open discussion about how the mortgage industry, at least the attendees of the conference, view blockchain. And we'll walk through some of uh, the thoughts from that conference. Okay. The, our during the course of the conference, we collected comments from speakers, solicited opinions from attendees on what they thought about blockchain. This slide depicts just a sampling of those comments. We got pros, we got cons, just starting off with the cons, we've heard a, a lot of these criticisms before. Blockchain still fragmented, fancy word for a database, one point that I thought was really interesting, and we heard something similar to this in the actual mortgage uh, MBA conference that was held in San Diego in October, a lot of companies have built a small blockchain for a single transaction and then stopped. I think this is just indicative of where we're at in the life cycle of blockchain. But now switching over to the left-hand side, now people seem to think, now is the time for blockchain, just that last bullet. One comment that really opened up my eyes and got me excited, everyone needs to get together and build a blockchain. We heard people say blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. Someone specifically said the future's blockchain. So I think if you're on this call and you're excited about blockchain as I am, I, I think this really bodes well. And it's, uh, it tells me and hopefully tells all of us that momentum is really starting to build. Uh, Angel, James, is there anything you wanted to add to that? You know, Marvin, you've got some great points. Um, you know, I reflect back on October being at the MBA conference and you heard blockchain being mentioned. You heard people talking about it. You know, granted, it's the first time that community had gotten together in the, about a two year period because of COVID. Um, but you weren't hearing, a, you know, a tremendous amount of it uh, then. We were really having to go out and talk to a lot of the exhibitors and a lot of the presenters in order to find out you know, what they're doing or what their thoughts are relevant to uh, distributed ledger technologies. This conference, now granted this is a tech conference, so it's a, you know, a little bit different format, but it has been consistent. Um, we have almost every session that I was in, somebody was mentioning blockchain, asking questions about blockchain, uh, as we walked around the exhibit at Paul floor, you know, a lot more active discussions going on. 
still not a lot of movement or advancement. In fact, one of the uh, sessions that we sat in, the Visions of Future of Residential Mortgage Lending, a very well attended session. In fact, it was standing room only. There was well over a hundred people in just the, the one session. <clears throat> they were talking quite a bit about blockchain in that one and some of the benefits that we're seeing and potentially can achieve in the industry. But they asked a very interesting question at the end, which is how many individuals in the audience actively were involved in an actual blockchain chain project. And there was maybe four or five of us in the room that raised our hands saying that, hey, we actively do have something going on. So while we're starting to hear more discussion about it, the, the, the traction is still a little bit slow to take off. And you know, I think your point on the cons, Marvin, about how a lot of companies went out there, okay, let me find out what blockchain is. Let me try and build something. And they build it for a, a one transaction or two, and then they never take it anywhere else. It, it really needs to be taken to that next level so that you can see and achieve the benefits and the values that will come out of blockchain. Yeah, that's, that's great feedback. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Angel Alban. I just want to share a little bit. This is more a public service announcement. So the Mortgage Bankers of America is our association in the United States. So if you're a member, definitely get involved. There is a committee that's called the Residential Technology Forum, also known as ResTech. So we were at that committee meeting on Monday with all the peers and all the technology and all the uh, the people that are driving that committee and trying to drive innovation standards, positive changes to the mortgage industry. And we had presented a proposal to start the conversation of blockchain in that committee meeting. Um, that was approved uh, through a series of meetings uh, at, at the conference. So I'm excited to say that going forward, the ResTech committee meeting, at, which is part of the MBA, and if you're a member, you can uh, email Rick Hill, rhill at mba.com, or you can go to the mba.org website and find the Residential Technology Forum and sign up. We are going to be uh, having a three-part series. You know, we're going to start off with the very basics, right? Kind of a primer. What is blockchain, right? Let's just get everybody to understand what blockchain is. Then we're going to, part two is going to be who within the mortgage industry ecosystem is doing blockchain right? How are they doing it? What's working? Um, and can anybody in the audience or in their community help them, right? So what we want to do is take a supportive approach. Uh, you know, we, a lot of us are competitors at a lot of different levels, but all, we're all part of this ecosystem. We're all part of the housing fabric, part of the housing industry. And so this is a very innovative technology that's very transformative. And if we can help each other, that, um, that's going to be very, very positive. For, for blockchain and our industry. So we got that commitment. So that's really, really exciting. And then the third part is really going to be, you know, hey, if there is a technology out there that is working in some shape or form, let's bring it to this committee. Let's put it in front of them. Let's do just a short demo. And let's just start getting people to think about blockchain, seeing blockchain in action to help drive that, that evolution and revolution of, of blockchain. So I wanted to give you guys that update. I'm really excited. It's an industry first um, and it's gonna help out the entire global industry as well and also help our efforts here at the Hyperledger uh, Foundation. And Thanks, Angel. actually, oh. I, yeah, and, and I, I'm really excited that um, Rick Grant is here. So Rick, I'd like to get your thoughts on on, on this, on what we're talking about, what, what, did, what were your takeaways from a blockchain perspective at the sure, end? Sure, absolutely. And thanks for having me, guys. Um, I don't know if you can hear me very well. I'm actually hiding in a stairwell in Bally's in Las Vegas because, uh, well, too long to say. My desk is littered with notes from this conference. It was one of the best shows I've been at in, well, we haven't been at any shows in the last two years. So it's the best show I've been at in a long time. It was great <clears throat> sitting down with you, Marvin. It was great seeing you at the show, Angel. I saw, at the, and I should preface this for the fact that I'm an old reporter. So I've covered this industry since 97. I've been at a lot of NBA tech shows over the years. And this was one of the better ones 
uh, a lot of people were telling me that they were actually sitting down with lenders and actually making deals at this show because lenders have definite needs now and they have the wherewithal to actually invest. And that's exciting. Don't know how long that's going to last given what the NBA's estimates for the next couple of years are, but at least the next 12 months, it should be a kind of a target rich environment for people that are bringing good, useful technologies to bear on our industry. That said, a lot of the conversations I was involved at this show were still, still talking about technologies that we've had for many years and only recently fully utilized during the COVID crisis. So e-sign, e-close, e-notes, things that we've had access to for years um, are now getting a bunch of attention that they probably should have gotten attention a long time ago. The good news with that is that it's kind that all of those technologies are precursors to blockchain and the use of blockchain. And so getting lenders completely comfortable with normalizing their process with these tools that they've really had to get used to during COVID is great going forward. But the vendors I talked to on the floor were excited. Uh, the, the, the speakers actually provided better information than I anticipated. And I, I just have so many notes to go through to get all my thoughts straight. Um, but that's the exciting part of these conferences for me is gathering up all that information. So a good show for anybody who was here. You know, Rick, you, you've got some great points. Um, I had attended the um, how trends intersect in today's changing industry. And it was kind of fascinating when you look at things like Ron and e-notes and e-closing and things like that, and they were showing year over year the percentage of closings that were occurring. And you start to see some of that, the real growth. For years, it was just a very small amount. You start to see some of that growth start to occur in 2019. But then in 2020, it probably quadrupled. And in 2021, it probably quadrupled again on top of that. So yeah, the, the pandemic really did have kind of a positive impact for our industry relevant to you know, digital transformation and moving things online and getting away from wet, wet signatures and all the, the heavy paperwork that we've been so used to over the decades. Oh, no doubt, no doubt, James. It was a fantastic catalyst and it forced uh, many of the players who had been resisting for a million reasons they thought were good to actually take the jump and implement the technologies that it took to be competitive during that time. So that was really good. And the, the year over year charts do look incredible. They're so e-notes, for instance, just a fantastic jump. But when you consider that of all the notes sold last year or yeah, in 2021, only about seven and a half percent or e-notes, yeah. we realize we have a long, long way to go, but we're getting there faster than we've ever been before. And what stood out in my mind for this session is uh, several of us went to the NBA conference in San Diego in October, and the mindset around blockchain was completely different at this session than it was at San Diego. At San Diego, it was more... Uh, keeping us and blockchain at arm's length. We don't know where this is gonna go. Oh, is blockchain still around? Whereas here, once I handed my card to someone and it said blockchain on it, they wanted to talk to me. They wanted to find out what was going on blockchain, what we were doing, what other people were doing. It's really starting to come to the fore. Absolutely, and I think Marvin, you're gonna see even more of that later this year in the fall conferences and particularly MBA annual this year, where we tend to see a lot more of the CEOs in attendance, not just CTOs, CIOs, uh, uh, the people that we see here a lot. I think those people are going to be very interested in talking about where blockchain is later this year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I also want to underscore that the level of dialogue has gone up a level. And, and by that, I mean, in San Diego, people could barely sp spell blockchain. Now, in some of the sessions, people were saying, what's on-chain, what's off-chain? We want this to be blockchain platform agnostic. That's a much higher level discussion than what I was hearing and what I was being a part of in San Diego. So well, I, I think that's a fantastic development. Yes, absolutely, Marvin. And, and some of the people on this call, 
you guys in particular, and also I know Paul Bohan's on the show, you guys are partially responsible for that because you've been demonstrating solutions that can be implemented into the overall mortgage value chain. It's now a matter of tying those together so top executives can see strategically where this will take their companies in the future. Excellent. Um, is there anyone else on the call that's at the MBA conference that wanted to chime in, provide input or feedback? Okay, uh, well, let's continue on to the next slide. Um, it's more discussion about the MBA uh, tech. I wanted to drill down on a specific session. In Rick, you talked about eNotes, and the session that really stood out in my mind here was the smart docs versus smart contracts. When I saw the title of this session, I fully expected this to be a UFC brawl about these guys just absolutely going at it. Smart docs, no smart contracts. And First, let me back up. The speakers for this session were Brett Bodie from Mid America Mortgage, Charles Epperson, Chief Technology Officer for Evolve Mortgage Services, and Fred Matera from Redwood Trust. So, some of you may recall that Redwood Trust is the REIT that announced the pricing of the market's first non agency residential mortgage back securitization using blockchain in concert with liquid mortgage. So you had a heavyweight panel going over this discussion. Um, what really surprised me was rather than this being that, you know, battle galore, the speakers were able to present smart docs and smart contracts as complementary rather than as competing solutions. In Rick, you, you talked about eNotes. I, I'm not sure if you sat in on this, that you may have. Do you have any thoughts on, on this session? You know, I had a meeting during that session and I couldn't see it. So I'm looking forward to MBA putting it up on their app so I can watch it uh, uh, later before it expires. Um, no, I, I really didn't get to talk to anybody about this. Some of my clients are in the e, uh, in the document space and they've e you know, enabled all of their documents, but how they actually end up on the, the final contracts or the notes and the deeds, I haven't really been in many discussions about that. And what really stood out to me is the point that you made about e-notes and how how usage of e-notes is increasing. So as you guys can see, e-notes is based on the MISMO V.3.6 XML protocol uh, versus smart contracts. They're programs stored on a blockchain. And I, I think everyone's probably pretty familiar with those. Rather than being competing solutions, as I said, there, there was no conflict. They're, they're complementary. Uh, James, Angel, did you guys have any comments on this one? Yeah, no, I, I agree, Marvin. Um, I attended this session with you. I, I was thinking the same thing, that it was going to be, uh, hey, what are the pros and cons of doing each one of these? And they opened up the session right away to talk about that versus not really being a versus. It's really an and. It's really the fact that, hey, tying both of these technologies together as we move forward is really where the uh, big benefit is going to wind up being. Yeah, my takeaway from this meeting was the fundamentals of blockchain, right? Establishing the truth, getting as close as you can to that source. And if smart documents can be leveraged for that or leveraged for validation prior to writing to the, to the, to the block, to the blockchain, um, that's, I, that's what I took away was that they realized that there's a lot of data that's flying around. It all depends what use case, you know, are you originating the loan? Are you doing due diligence on a loan to retrade and, and, and resell, right? So there's a lot of exchange of information, a lot of revalidation, a lot of repulling of services. And a lot of those documents today are being delivered in smart talk format. So why not leverage it as part of your blockchain solution? So that was really my big takeaway. I thought, and I found, I found that exciting. And the last point that I wanted to mention on this is there was a very active Q&A session at the end of that. I, I asked Fred what his thoughts were around some of the ongoing criticisms about blockchain in terms of latency, in terms of 
uh, cost uh, of operating. And he gave, uh, uh, I think, a very cogent answer that uh, at least from Redwood Trust's perspective, and it should be from everyone's perspective, they should try and be blockchain platform agnostic to the extent that we as an industry or technologists can make blockchain turnkey, that will expedite the uptake of blockchain. And, and also from a profitability or excuse me, ROI perspective, the business case that he provided from the value gained on the securitization far outweighs the cost of having a blockchain running in, in your enterprise. So the, the details for this are, we actually covered in a previous session. The white paper is included in, in our wiki link. So I encourage you guys to, to take a look at that. It, it's a great white paper and it's a great use case for blockchain. Okay, that, that brings us to the end of our presentation. What I wanted to do at this point was just remind everyone that our next subgroup meeting is May 12th. If you have any suggestions for topics for May or any future meetings, please let us know. Business cases, demos, technical, knowledge sharing. Uh, we're still trying to actively get one of the regulators on here. This is one thing I, I forgot to mention. We there were numerous questions to the regulatory people that were attending about what they thought about blockchain. And there is an active effort to get the regulators involved and to opine on blockchain. That they're doing things in the background. They're still a bit uh, hesitant to share, but hopefully we'll be able to bring something along those lines to you guys in the future. So please, if there are any topics you guys would like to talk about, please let us know. And with that, uh, I wanted to open it up to everyone. If you guys have any questions about what we've been going over about the conference, uh, please uh, let us know. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go first, I don't mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm disappointed I couldn't be there. Uh, we, I had uh, family things going on this week and I could not leave. But um, I've been getting it. So I was talking to Fred Matera, uh, since everyone keeps talking about him. So, you know, Fred, we're working with Fred at Redwood Trust right now, both on a proof of concept rollout, as well as uh, from an investment perspective, they're investing in us. So I can tell you that that it's really amazing. Just, just what Marvin was saying about how, you know, in San Diego, you know, people couldn't spell blockchain. It, it's definitely catching momentum now. So we're, we're, we're all in a, in, in a good position, I think. Um, I'm, you know, and you mentioned the, the NBA, um, national, you know, another conference coming up back in Vegas, uh, will be in July. If you want to talk about the secondary market, you're going to have the uh, structured finance, um, SFIG Vegas, uh, is July. I don't remember. I, I'll, I can, I can post up the, the dates, but that's going to be a very interesting conference, not on the origination side so much, but more secondary. Thanks for that I input, Paul. Uh, always yep. great to to, to have you on board. And it, I, I think you're one of the people that's really going to move blockchain. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Well, and, and, you know, it was nice to see Rick Grant here. I didn't, <laughs> didn't know he was in the group. That's uh, good to see Rick. Sometimes they invite us strange guys just to see what you smart people are doing. So it's good to see you, Paul. <laughs> yeah, I think you fit right in. Don't worry. So I, I wish I was in Vegas having a cocktail with you guys, uh, yeah, but uh, if you come to July, if you come in July, I'll be there. I'm, I'm speaking at the conference as well. Okay, great, great. L looking forward to that. Hey, uh, any other comments or, or questions from anyone else on the call? Uh, e even if it's not related to the mortgage tech conference, uh, any updates on what you may be doing or questions around blockchain? Yeah, this is Angel. I just want to take the opportunity. Again, another public service announcement. These calls are being recorded. So if you're watching this, um, highly encourage you guys to join the Hyperledger Foundation. There, uh, all the links are available uh, on this presentation. Um, if you're a technical team looking to how to get started, highly suggest that you go to the uh, POCs. There's one called Fabcar, F-A-B-C-A-R. Uh, Hyperledger Fabric. It's a auto finance Hyperledger Fabric scenario. We actually did that one uh, about 
eight months ago. And it was a great way to get started with blockchain, to understand how to implement a blockchain, how to set up the environment, set up the sandbox, set up the channels, learn about nodes. And, and then once you get, once you've mastered that and you've set it up a couple of times, then I, I challenge you to start modifying it, right? And that's what we did. We challenged ourselves and we started to modify that, that actual POC and changed it from an auto finance to a mortgage finance, make it more mortgage fi finance centric, you know, start, start making changes. So it becomes more real within, from a mortgage perspective, you know, a, a, an auto finance asset and a securitization, you know, uh, there's a lot of overlap and commonalities, right? And, and you know, you got to track the, uh, the balance, you know, the interest rate, the term, the payments, you know, so there's a lot of those fundamentals that run across from an auto finance to a mortgage. But as you know, in the mortgage industry, there's just so many details and processes and other data points and, and, and partners that you need to keep track of. So those are really, really important. Um, so I highly encourage you guys for that on the technical team. And also we are planning on having a technical meeting. Um, it's going to be uh, maybe once a month. And, and because these meetings have been really, really for all, uh, all groups, right? Not just C-level, not just the, the technology guys, the business guys, the ops guys. We really want this to be um, a session where everybody within all parts of the organization can understand what blockchain is, how it's evolving in our industry, how we can think about it, how we can prepare for it. And some of the feedback that we've gotten, and, and we're happy to uh, answer questions on a technical level as well. You can reach out to us directly. Um, but we do want to have more of a technical meeting, have more a technical deep dive, you know, share our screen, show the sandbox, show the, show the blockchain, talk about the nodes and the channels and how those things are working. So we are working in that direction. So if you definitely have interest in that, please let us know. You can put your uh, email or, or, or just say, hey, I'm interested in this chat, or you can reach out to us through the Hyperledger um, uh, wiki site once you join. Okay. Um, and the last piece I just want to share at, at a high level, coming to this conference uh, last week was a big crypto uh, event in Miami. Jamie Dimon, you know, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase, the largest bank in the US by asset size, um, said he gave a huge, huge testament here. And I'm going to bring up my phone because I, 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 I want to make sure. Uh, so this is what Jamie Dimon said, right? Decentralized finance and blockchain are real new technologies that can be deployed in both public and private fashion, permissions or not, right? And so Jamie Dimon has a little bit of a bad rap of being anti-crypto, right? I, I think all of us here know that crypto and blockchain are two separate things, so I'm not gonna get into that right now, but this is a huge, huge endorsement or testament, however you wanna think about it. Jamie Dimon, um, they have a huge group at JP Morgan Chase, they have Link, they have their own JP Morgan coin. Um, they just signed a deal with SAP in Europe where they're gonna be implementing JP Morgan uh, coin and settlement blockchain uh, technology to automate the payment and the settlement processes of all of the European industry who are using the SAP ERP platforms. So huge, huge news uh, that I wanted to share with you guys. And with that, let me turn it back over to Marvin. Uh, thanks, Angel. And really, I, I don't think we could end it on a better note with that type of positive input. So I wanted to thank everyone for attending. If you do have any questions or comments, please reach out to us either through uh, the different links that, that are on the screen right now. Our individual emails are on the screen as well. But please, we, we want to be advocates for blockchain and make sure that we all go on this journey together. So th thank you for attending everyone. Have a great day. And I know some of us are probably hitting the slot machines or some of us are getting on flights. Safe travels, everyone. Bye.